Paula Jasper. Today we're in Petoskey, we're at the Little Travers Bay History Museum. Joining me is Jane Cardinal. Thanks for joining me, Jane. Nice to see you. Now you're going to give our viewers a little history tour. You're going to show us and tell us about some of the things that are in here in the museum. Well, I'd like you to look in this case right here because it says a lot about Emmett County. Did you know that Emmett County is probably the most outstanding area in the, in the entire United States for the quality of the quill work done by the Native Americans here? And the other place would probably be Nova Scotia, but this is outstanding. This is an amazing craft. Uh, originally, it was done on bigger containers and dried foods were put in these containers and the quill work on the top indicated what was in the container. These were always pu all put in caches in the ground. There was an area about six foot wide by maybe eight foot wide lined with birch bark. And then all the stores for the next summer, all the edibles, when it was spring and there wasn't much around, were in there with these quilled insignia on the top. And when you came in the spring, well, this was all covered over in the winter time with boards, with actually logs, there were no boards then, logs and earth. And in the spring it was uncovered and all the foodstuffs were there. And you could send your child to go get the one with the, oh, on top. Well, these became an art form that the French thought were beautiful. And of course, our tourists here thought they were incredible. And the art form continued here. Now to do a quilled box like that, and it looks so simple, that would be such a wrong impression. The bark has to be gathered in the spring. And you go to a, 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 bark, a birch bark tree and you make a little X in it. And if on a certain day those corners curl up, you take your knife and you reach as high as you can and down to as low as you can, do a cross at the top and the bottom, and it'll some, sound like a gunshot went off because that entire bark surface will flip off the tree. Now many people think that kills the tree, it does not. You have to be careful, you don't want to go too deep, but there's your bark, you straighten it out, you flatten it. So you gather this in the springtime, right? Well in the wintertime, that's when you gather the quills. And to quill a porcupine is quite an interesting <laughs> process. I learned how to do a quilled box by the very wonderful Yvonne Walker Kishik. And she is, has gotten recent um, awards from Washington, D.C. Lifetime achievement in this craft. She is the best. So she told me how to quill a porcupine, and I, I thought, oh my, one day maybe. And I had been working with some quills someone had given me, um, and a Native American young man came to my house and said, I've got a present for you. And I looked at him and I said, a dead porcupine? He said, yes, it's in the car. <laughs> and we went out, and my husband said, not in the house. <laughs> So I took a garbage can, put it over it, and uh, the next morning I walked out there and said, don't be squeamish, and I quilled it. <laughs> and then, now you've got the bark, but now you separate all those quills from the hair after you've washed it three times, rinsed it, gotten all the whatever's out of it, and then you have to size all those quills as to the width of them, and they need to be equally fine. All right, that's done. If you want to dye them, then you dye them, depending on the strength of the dye. Originally, of course, many of these are natural dyes. These reds down here, of course, are not. These are commercial dyes, but this, these particular ones were probably done in the 30s. I think this is a WPA piece, and I think this, these two pieces were done by Angeline Chippewa and Marianne Mixamung from Cross Village. This is something they specialized in, these little house purses. They're perfectly beautiful. To quill, you make two holes. You, of course, you trace your design down on the box, and the impression stays there. And then you take a, a fine needle, and you poke on either side of where that quill will lay and draw it through. And then you cut it off on the back. Not often I talk to somebody who's done that. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I have persistence, but <laughs> actually the thing was I wanted to see what the process was about because it was incredibly beautiful to me, and when I found out how difficult it was, 
I had huge respect for it. Right now, I'm currently working on beating moccasins and making those out of, of tanned hide. <laughs> just to see what it's about. And again, I'm going through the learning curve. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Jane. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have. Paula Jasper, minus 26 in Petoskey.